Welcome to EVO 10 ECU Flash Training Part 5. In this video, we're going to take a look at ROM file switching between different model years as well as doing a bench flash procedure. So we're going to find sometimes some model years of our EVO 10s have less than desirable ROM IDs. Now we can switch it to a different model year. I'm going to be explaining the rules of how to switch going between different ROM IDs. Um, there's going to be definitely some, some structures that we need to understand. And then we're going to take a look at how we can build a custom bench flash harness. In case you do your flash process and you actually brick your ECU, you don't need to send it out to have someone recover it. You can do it yourself. You have to build a harness. I have a nice schematic that we're going to be going over and the process to do the bench flash. You'll also find that switching some model years in a ROM IDs requires us to do a bench flash in order to make that happen. So we're gonna go over the entire process so it makes sense and you're able to recover your ECU or switch to whatever ROM ID you'd like between any model year. Without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at doing ROM ID switching within the same model year of EVO that we're gonna be potentially working with, as well as doing bench flash recovery mode so that if we brick our ECU during our flash process, we know how to fix it so it can continue on, the car's gonna actually run, we're not gonna have a dead ECU, or if we wanna go and switch our ROM ID to an incompatible model year ROM ID. So we're gonna talk about why we wanna potentially do that here in the first part of the video. So what I have open right now is two different files. One is gonna be a 2011 USDM, and one's gonna be another, a 2010 USDM EVO application. Both are MRs, they both have the SST transmission. Now looking at these files, if we check out our current ROM metadata and we look at what we have defined here, if we're taking a look at our 2011, if we move down and we're looking into our lower section here of our calibration file, we're gonna find something like our Omni 4 bar boost. That's gonna be uh, not defined. We can see it's here, but we don't find anything underneath this to edit. So in this file here, unless we had the XML definitions, we wouldn't be able to run a four bar map sensor if we wanted to run more than 32 pounds of boost. Um, we would have to figure out uh, another solution here. We'd have to actually go in and bring in a different model year file that has better XML definitions. Now, if we move down here a little bit further, we take a look at something like our OBD2, OBD inspection. These are not going to be present here um, in this particular 2011 model year. So if we jump into the 2010 model year, what we're going to find is if we scroll down here a bit into our file, that we're going to have our four bar XML code here present. So we're able to switch over this particular ROM ID to a four bar and having no issues. We also can go down here more towards the bottom of our screen. We can find things like our OBD2 codes can be exposed as well as our OBD inspection. There's also going to be a lot of other tables here that if even within the same sections, if we're looking in something like our SST transmission, there's gonna be more tables to find within this 2010 file compared to the 2011. Now that doesn't mean the 2011 doesn't have those tables. It just means that the XML definition has been worked out here in a 2010 this would be the more desirable fi file to actually upload into that vehicle. So in my 2011 MR example that we took a look at in the second video, we did the read and write process. I actually have flashed it over off camera to a USDM 2010 EVO MR file, and that is what I have in the vehicle. So there's going to be a hierarchy here of ROM IDs that are gonna be more superior or more supported than others and I've actually provided that here so, so we know exactly when we're getting into things if we read the ROM ID out of the ECU and it's not going to be a desirable one you know what ones are going to be what you should be looking at so if we look here I have a note document um, in notepad uh, the preferred EVO 10 ROMs for you. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip if you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer make sure you click right here if you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later